Part 6, Choosing Your Power Supply. Now there are many power supplies out there, and let's say you, you want to buy the one that's right for you. If you're into gaming, if you're going to be putting some intense components, some high power components inside your, your case, inside your on your PC, you're going to be wanting to get a big power supply. So let's put it this way. If you're into gaming, graphic editing, anything that's that's really going to be taking power, really need power, you're going to want anything 750 watts and over. If you're into multimedia, if you if you just want to watch TV on your computer, if you want to listen to music, just you know mainstream shit, you're just going to need probably you'll be good with. 450 to 500 watt power supply. I go from 500 to 7. Now, if you're really just, if you, there's nothing to your computer, you want a real big budget computer, and you're you're just gonna be listening to music and not playing any games, and you don't need the power. 300 watts is fine. All right, so here we have two examples of power supplies. Here we've got an Ultra. Here we've got a Corsair. Now the difference, power-wise, this one is a 600 watt ATX power supply. This one is a 750 watt ATX power supply. Now, if you're wondering what ATX is, it's its form factor, how big it is, the dimensions, so also the screw location. Um, so you're going to want to make sure if you buy an ATX power supply that you buy an ATX case. The reason being, if you get a micro ATX case, uh, you're going to need a micro ATX power supply. It's smaller. So, a few differences that you could find between power supplies. Some come with a switch, some don't. On and off. Um, in this case, they both do. Uh, they both come with fans. Now, depending on the brand, depending on the quality, could mean um, a louder fan, a quieter fan. So you're going to want to do some research in there, too. So they both come with fans. They could also be different sizes. Um, bigger the fan, the more airflow, the more air, air pushes, the cooler it is, the better it is. Another thing you want to look for is the connections. Does it have all the connections you need? Will it have enough for my motherboard and all of its components? Um, most likely it will, but you're going to want to look into it. This one has a lot more than this does, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is better. There's a lot more cables, but as you can see, it's all running in there and it'll just clog up your machine. Without good cable management, this is a disaster. So, you're going to want to look into a modular power supply if you got the extra money. If you don't, this is fine. All you're going to need to is hide the cables. If you get a modular power supply, you only plug in the cables you need. As you can see, I don't have a modular power supply. Why? Well, because it costs <laughs> it cost a bit more. So... I just work with a lot of cable management. One thing you're going to want to know is how many amps runs on 12 volt rail. And if you see a chart like this, most likely when you're buying it, you will. You're going to see that. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a lens cap. <laughs> so if you're running, um, if you see a chart like this, there's one there that says 12 volt. And underneath it, it says max output under the 12 volt. It says 32 amps. Now my graphics card, notice notice this, my graphics card requires a minimum of 36 amps on this rail. So this won't work. You need something like this. On a 12 volt rail for this one, it outputs a maximum of 60 amps. So it's almost double this. So this means I could hook up two, three graphics cards and I'll be fine. This one, it won't work. So make sure you get 
the power supply that's right for you. This is a 750. This is a 600. Uh, they go way up to like 1600, 2000 watts. Um, and you're not gonna draw. You're not gonna want to drop anywhere below 300. So get the one that's right for you. Do some research, and you'll be fine.